can can a man actually predict a market the downfall in the markets ahead of time to almost the day? Normally, I'd say no. And, and if anybody ever tried to do that, they they must have a little bit of a screw loose, you know. But I'm going to tell you guys what I see this Friday about only 72 hours away as being very problematic to say the least good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the show on this Monday the 29th of August 2022 thank you for tuning in I'm glad to have you guys here now that little clip I just played that was me about three days before the the thousand point drop that came on Friday you know and I saw Monday too if you went on to listen to my show I saw Monday as being problematic as well but I wasn't sure what was going to happen on Monday well this gave me an awful lot of information what just happened gave me an awful lot of information about these markets uh, and what it told me is is uh, about uh, the timing of a really big problem that's coming up in the markets now i don't think there's quite because of the way the markets are responding today roughly more or less hovering around 200 250 points down today so far tells me that we're nearing the energy needed for this huge downturn in the markets but i don't think we're quite there yet uh, and for reasons because of what the fed's doing but you know the fed's gonna like i've told i see i predicted this whole thing out there like what's happening now but I, my timing was a little bit off again but in the end of this game we're gonna go back to profoundly high inflation inflation and you know another thing we got going on i'm gonna explain to you guys is bank lending interest rates go up people they 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 can't borrow money like they used to if you've got supply side issues or supply side problems out there you need to fix some people need to fix them they they look around their business say it's a big uh, uh shipping business or whatever and they say you know if we opened up that other side of the shipyard we might be able to solve this this supply side issue we're having more effectively but in order to open up the other side of the shipyard, we need to borrow a big amount of money. And now interest rates are going up. We can't afford to borrow that big amount of money. We need to open up that side of the shipyard. So we're going to have to leave it closed. And this leads to more supply side constraints, which leads to, again, higher prices. See, all these things are all vicious circles. That's what they are. One thing leads to another and creates a feedback loop in a vicious circle and that's what we're being trapped in now at this point and it all up ultimately leads toward massive inflation and no way that the feds ever going to get out of this trap and right now they are kicking and screaming and they're putting a lot of pressure on the markets and that pressure is going to relieve itself at a certain point and then they're going to have to be they're going to be forced to go back but it's going to cost a lot of money and the longer that they hold the line or in other words what chairman powell says cause pain the more it's going to cost them to get things back to normal again or some sort of normal within the financial system which they have to have to maintain their power structure which is very important they sit in an ivory tower telling all of us what to do they can't lose that structure that holds them up in that ivory tower it's as simple as that. In order to maintain that structure, they have to maintain the system. And if they let the system go too far into decay and not maintain it, it could crumble and fall to pieces. And they know that. So they're risking everything trying to get out of this trap that they're in right now. Because they know on the other side of that coin how ultimately hyperinflation will tear their system apart as well 
And so they're caught in a terrible bad trap, and there's no way out. All they can do is delay, 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 kick the can down the road. And that's what this whole maneuver with the Fed is all about right now, is trying to stave off. They know they can't stop hyperinflation at this point. It's gone too far. They've passed the point of no return. But what they can do is they can slow it down for a little while. They can buy a few more months or maybe even a year more. And that's what they're doing ultimately right now at this point. Let's get in there and let's take a look at all this stuff. Let's open up the charts right here and take a look. We're going to take a look first at the silver price. which was shot up earlier, uh, but now it's restabilized. It's down five cents on the day so far. Uh, but we, we've got an upward trend uh, now on the silver price. 1887 today. Gold, we're looking at uh, the same sort of a pattern. Uh, we're at 1744 and gold's up a little bit more than silver. We've been seeing that trend lately where gold is up a little bit more than silver. Um, one of the things about that trend is, is the fact that gold is more of a, still more of a monetary metal. It's become more of a monetary metal. They have forcefully moved silver, which used to be the ultimate monetary metal. They've forced it into a peg of an industrial metal, which it doesn't want to stay there. And I'm going to tell you guys why. It can break free of that peg that they're putting on it, saying, hey, it's only an industrial metal. It's been a monetary metal all the way through history. And it can go back to being a monetary metal overnight if there's a financial catastrophe. So just keep that in mind. 1744 for gold today. It's up five dollars and eighty cents. Cryptocurrency today. And we are looking at uh where did I hear someplace uh we're looking at a Bitcoin price of twenty thousand and eighty eight dollars. Where did I hear someplace that the mining that they're doing in Texas, I think it is. They're mining crypto, they're mining Bitcoin in Texas. And they're using enough power to run the whole state of New York. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why they're having trouble with the Texas power grid, you know. You remember they were having instability issues there, maybe a, a year or so ago during a freeze down there in Texas, and they couldn't run enough power to run the state. Uh, they had a little bit of an issue there with that. Anyway, so we're looking at an Ethereum price of 1513. Now let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And it has 168 points down now. So it's starting to climb back. It's clawing its way back a little bit. This is a strong indicator that this isn't going to be, a poss very possibly, it's not going to be our big crash right yet. Not quite yet. I don't think there's quite enough energy. For, well, first reason why I say that is, if we take a look at the bond yields on the U.S. 10-year, we're not up to 3.25 yet percent. We're at, I think, 3.1 percent right now. This is your main energy that you need to 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 push these to push the Dow and the Russell and the S and P. This is the main energy you need to push these markets down. Is going to come from those bond yields. So we're only at 3.1. So. We, got, we had enough energy with along with the statements that the Fed is going to maintain their course of, of uh, tightness. We had enough energy uh, on Friday to push the market down a thousand points. But uh, the energy is going to increase because the Fed's going to come in with $95 billion in September of quantitative tightening. Already they've started to turn their balance sheet over. If you take a look at the uh, Federal Reserve balance sheet from FRED, you take a look at that. And what do you see? It's crested and it's starting to fall very slowly uh, for the last few months. It's going to start to fall faster when they start to take $95 billion a month out of the, out of the, out of the, uh, out of the system. But they're not going to get very far when they start that in September. And it's almost like it's designed because it's so much that they're doing, so big of quantitative tightening that they must obviously know they can't get away with that. I mean, that's absolutely obvious to the Fed and everybody else that they're not going to get away with that for very long. And they're going to drain all the liquidity out of the system very rapidly because that's not like the overnight, overnight market. 
Remember when they were saying they were pumping a trillion dollars a night into the overnight market? They were rolling that over every day. You remember the repo window, repo madness back that started back in September of, was it uh, 2020, I think? Anyway, repo madness, and they're pumping all that money in to support the system. This is different. When they're withdraw with they are with when they are withdrawing ninety five billion dollars a month by letting these bonds mature and sliding them off the table, uh, you have to understand something. That is the same liquidity that we needed to prop things up. It's more. I think they were doing like what was it sixty billion or eighty billions or something a month into the system when they're doing quantitative easing. Now they're doing quantitative tightening, which is reversing. It's slamming on the brakes, in other words. They ain't going to get away with that for very long, and they know it. That's when we're really entering in. That's when you're really going to see the conditions right for a prime for a market crash. And they're not going to stop this process until they get their market crash. Now I'll tell you, how much of a market crash, you ask? If the market falls more than 40% from its peak, Talking about the Dow Jones and the other markets too. If they fall more than 40% from their peak, the system will freeze. And I think they probably know that. They can't go that deep. In other words, if they let it cut 40% down from its peak, before they that's when the freeze will come. They gotta they gotta stop it before it gets that low. And I'm figuring they're gonna stop it about halfway there or something. You know, I mean, uh well, let's take a look at the Dow Jones here, okay? And uh, its peak was up here at, uh, what, 36,000. And uh, if we see it, uh, if, if if like I say, if it fell 40%, but they're not going to let it fall that far. I, I'm thinking they're probably not going to let it fall any further than maybe, uh, oh, I don't know, somewhere around here, you know, maybe 25,000 or something on the Dow Jones. And the other markets would be to scale. Of what that would be on the Dow Jones that's probably somewhere they're probably gonna let it fall about there someplace and then they're gonna suddenly come in to rescue everything see they've told you they're data dependent see if they let it fall too far if they let it fall down here someplace you know big dime crash boom bing bang everything would freeze the system would, what would happen is bankruptcies would start the system and there'd just be a liquidity uh, liquidity would dry up so fast interbank lending would stop the banks wouldn't be lending between each other, and they, they, they certainly ain't going to lend to you. And that's what you do when you use a credit card or whatever, you know, or you use your debit card or whatever. They'd even freeze the accounts. They'll freeze your accounts so you can't use your debit. Nothing will function if they get down so low that the system freezes. Then they got major troubles. They're not going to go there. They'd have to pump so much money into the system, probably twenty trillion or more, to unfreeze everything. Uh, knowing how crazy they are, yeah, it might happen. <laughs> Seriously. In fact, maybe that's what they intend on doing. Just thinking about it right now, off the top, off the cuff, off the top of my head. Maybe that's their intention to let the system freeze up and then unfreeze it with a whole bunch of money because they'd create a crisis, a, a crisis that would be unbearable. And they'd have to, just like when they have to raise the debt ceiling. Every, you know, you get... Janet Yellen comes out there and she's just like, I mean, practically pulling her hair out, telling everybody that the whole system's going to collapse if they don't raise the debt ceiling. So what happens every time they raise the debt ceiling? You have to create, in government, they have to create a bit of a panic in order to get what they want. So what do they want? Power and money. So yeah. Maybe they do want to print twenty trillion in order to get the system back running again. If the system freezes and everybody out there in the whole world would be like, "What in the heck's happening? I can't use my debit card today. What the heck's happening? I can't I can't access my account." There would be a big panic, and then they would have the reason to print a whole bunch of new money for everyone, all their buddies, you know, make everybody rich and, and engorge them. Bring interest rates down into the negative. Get rid of cash. Bring out the central bank digital currency, whatever. We're in for turbulent times coming right up, guys. 
very soon. And be prepared for a possible credit freeze. And I've been talking about this for a while. Uh, this means have a little bit of cash on hand. Not a lot, because ultimately you've got to know that cash is, is not something good to have ultimately in the long run. Because it's gonna, we're heading toward a hyperinflation ultimately. It's good to have a little bit in case of a credit freeze because uh, at that point in time, the stores and stuff will not be taking credit any longer. Just maybe, it might last a few days, it might last a few weeks. Anyway, let's take a look now at uh, crude oil. We're seeing it's up $1.98 on the day so far. It's quite a big jump. It's starting to go up again. It's starting to get up near 100 again. You're going to start to see price increases at the pump. This continues. This trend. 95.04. Move index today. We're stumbling along. It's been staying rather stable lately. It's broken down below its trend. And it's at 122.95. Let's take a look at bonds and rates. And we are seeing climbing yields today. 3.104 on the U.S. 10-year, so it's 3. Point, it's over 3.1, and uh, it's up 6.9 basis points on the day. And the U.S. 30 years at 3.25, and it's up 4.5 basis points. So when the U.S. 10-year here passes where the U.S. 30-year is right now at 3.25, that's when to really watch for your markets. More than just volatility. That's when the markets could turn downwards in a big way. That's when, we, and I've been saying this for years about the 3.25 mark on the markets and what that can do. U.S. dollar index 108.52 on the U.S. dollar index, and the dollar has started to descend a little bit today. It's losing a little bit of steam today, but not much. It's still very high. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Remember. You can find me over on Patreon, and it's only a dollar a month. And, I mean, that's a whole year, and it supports my channel. Appreciate you guys watching my show, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.